everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you uh, Saturday. Hope everybody is having an unbelievably blessed time. Uh, look, I'm not going to be long. This is really an impromptu uh, video. I do it a lot, but this is definitely one I wasn't necessarily planning on doing. Somebody hit me up and shared something with me. I went and checked it out. And I'm going to talk on it real briefly. Uh, don't forget, if you believe in the work we do at the Odyssey Project, I got some real hot stuff coming to you uh, to break down a lot that's going on within the community and how we can uh, be aware of it so that we can confront it and change it. Uh, so keep your eyes open for this content. Uh, I'm hoping that it will empower, inspire, encourage us to do way more than what we've done. So, someone hit me up and shared with me uh, that Derek Jackson and his wife, Denia, uh, have filed for a divorce. Um, it's not clear which party filed for the divorce at this time, but what is being alleged is that Derek was seen with another female. So for those of you who are unaware, um, I think back in 2021, Derek was caught cheating on Denia. Now, this is relevant only because, it's relevant period, cheating is wrong and um, it's a character flaw. And I'll touch on that in a bit. But Derek was called cheating. The reason that it had such relevance is that Derek had basically built a fan base off of encouraging women and giving them advice on what they should and should not accept from black men or men in general. Uh, and basically had become a self proclaimed relational group. He was, I guess you could call the antithesis of, um, man, drew a blank that quick, Kevin Samuels. Um, two people on the opposite sides of the spectrum approaching things from two different angles. Uh, but the bottom line, if we're going to be honest, was uh, platform revenue. Uh, What's sad is that both of them had some very valid points, but chose to take certain angles that sort of diminished accountability. And I'm, I'm gonna touch on that in a minute, uh, to the point that nobody really wins because it's always the other person's fault. Uh, that is a dangerous perspective to take. Now, before I get into this, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna be very clear. There's two disclaimers. The first disclaimer is I am not celebrating, neither am I happy that the Jacksons are headed to divorce court. Anybody that knows me knows how I feel about marriage, how I feel about family. Uh, unfortunately, there are times when things simply cannot be resolved or people don't have the staying power to make it work and the commitment. Uh, the one thing I can tell you is that marriage is one of those things where you cannot do it by yourself. I don't care how committed you are. I don't care how much you want it to work. I don't care how much you say you're going to put into it. It requires two. It requires two people to be committed to going the distance even when they don't feel like it because that don't feel like it is coming. And you also need two people who are going to be credible and trustworthy, which minimizes the challenges that you're going to automatically face. When you got people who don't mind lying, don't mind cheating, don't mind moving around outside the boundaries of what should be expected, it's real hard. And, but, and, and even when you've got people who are doing it, you know, honest, straightforward, no cheating, it's still hard. So it takes two people. 
but I just wanted to first, that first disclaimer is I am not celebrating, neither am I happy. I'm using this as a point to talk about where we are as a people when it comes to relationships, where we are as a people when, we, when it comes to the things that are most important to us. Uh, so I found that uh, unfortunate, uh, but interesting. The second disclaimer is Kevin Samuels is deceased. He's not here to defend himself. I will not attack his character. I will talk about some of the points that he made and I will you know, make my points with respect to that. But he's not here to defend himself. Until his defense, I am you know, I think what, I mean, losing him at the stage that he passed away was extremely dangerous to us because he left a lot of content that will be misconstrued, mishandled, misused. Um, also, one thing that I noticed about uh, Kevin Samuels and his platform and his message is that he addressed black men too, but you never see those shared. And just interesting, something that I, I uh, thought should be brought out. Um, but I'm going to talk about some of the things that he said in Address Black Men. I'm also going to talk about filtering what he said so that it makes sense. Uh, some of the things I don't agree with. Uh, I, I definitely don't, didn't agree with how he did it. Uh, I don't think that it requires being, you know, abrasive to make a point. Um, I think that there's a way to tell a person something. Matter of fact, I make a living doing it, so I know it's possible. And I'm extremely uh, effective at doing it. I have one of the best success rates, not just in America, but in the world. So I know it's possible. So that's that. Uh, but it's not as profitable. So it is what it is. Here's the thing. Derek had a platform where he would constantly tell black women, you, you don't take this from me. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do this. And I actually reached out and I shared that, that that's not an adequate approach. The problem with certain behaviors with women who tend to be in relationships where they are accepting or tolerating behavior that they shouldn't be tolerating. If you've got to tell them not to tolerate it, then that's the back end of the deal. The front end of the deal is self-image, self-awareness, self-esteem, uh, self-confidence, and an awareness of self. The idea is to introduce the woman to her true self despite what she's been through, despite what she's experienced, find a way to unveil the true self. Underneath all of the harm, underneath all of the, the, the abandonment issues, underneath all of the poor decision, under, in, underneath all of that is something pure. And the idea is to introduce her to her identity. When she discovers who she is, you won't have to tell her what not to do. The very nature of her identity and, and the understanding of her value will dictate what she is. Except that's what value is. Value tells, tells you what you're willing to accept for something. Value in price, value in, 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 in items, products, merchandise, whatever. It's when you have a value and you say, this is what I will accept for it because this is what it's worth. Well, when you understand who you are, there are certain things that you simply will not tolerate because you know who you are. Now, it's easy in this world to lose yourself with all of the things that go on all the throes of life, uh, all the way from childhood. Poor parenting can rob a child of their identity. Abusive parenting can rob a child of their identity. Uh, sexual abuse as a child can rob a child of their identity, of their self-esteem, of their self-worth, of their value. In so many different ways, it can happen. Okay, and then to get up and go through something tragic as an adult could cause a person to try uh, to question who they are. So, in essence, what we should be doing instead of telling somebody what they shouldn't do, and getting them to, in some way, pretentiously. You know, that, that was his rally back when he was at the height of his game of women walking around talking about, I know my worth, I know my worth. Well, the truth of the matter is, 
It's just like wealth. When you're wealthy, you don't have to announce it. When you are sure of yourself, when you have confidence, you don't have to announce it. When you are a alpha male, you never have to announce it. So when you watch people running around proclaiming things, it's because they're trying to convince themselves of it and they haven't really truly grasped it. And that's because it was introduced wrong. It was introduced in the form of precept and idea of behavior versus sense of identity and self. And so that was that thing. But he did this thing. And this is the thing that you have to be extremely careful for with someone who operates on an international level as a an author, as a public speaker, as a performance psychologist and a trauma therapist. I've got to be very careful how I care myself because I am very vocal, specifically on the areas of relationship and marriage. I've written a couple of books specifically on marriage. And so when I went through what I went through this year, that was this real big push. On this. But then I had to ask myself, who am I? When I search myself, I'm who I am. I've all, I'm who I've said I'd be. I'm human. But there's a level of brilliance and commitment to the cause that makes me who I am, that makes me special. I'm not perfect. I, I acknowledge my imperfection. I acknowledge that there are some things that I still need to work on. That's what keeps me alive and going is I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. I don't have all the answers. I'm not perfect, but I am committed and I do walk the walk. I love my wife, still love my wife. I love her. I, I, I always spoke to her in gentleness when I speak to her now I speak to her in gentleness I think of her in gentleness it's always but there's so much that goes on so you have to ask yourself when you're in that position where people are observing you it's not just what you say it's what you do people are going to want to see are you living the life that you are talking about are you in your walk being expressive of your teachings? Because that's what true leadership is. It's in the modeling of your values. Again, my thing is, you guys always heard me say this. I, I always said, I don't treat my wife how I feel. I treat her how I have promised through my vows to treat her. It's not dependent upon how I feel. Sometimes I'm not feeling her. Sometimes I'm in my own space, but never am I mishandling her. Never am I talking down to her. Never am I verbally attacking her and definitely not physically attacking her. Never am I being disrespectful or cheating on her. That, that, that you know, there are some things, but you know, and, and again, this isn't me trying to put myself out as perfect or you know the good person in the relationship I, I, i'm not declaring that i'm not going to talk about my relationship i have too much love and respect for her to do that to talk about or try to you know my thing is i hope all the people who have loved on my wife you know and i ref, I, I still haven't got used to this whole ex thing and so uh i'm not gonna say anything that i don't feel like saying uh but the thing is, we have to be careful how we move when we're talking because people are paying attention and they're moving with us and the bigger the following, the greater the ripple when our humanity presents itself. And it's gonna present itself because nobody's perfect. But what you wanna do is you wanna have such consistency in the way you move. And the thing is, that's what I try. I, 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 I try to be consistent because that's what marriage meant to me. It meant showing up every day, the good and the bad, showing up every day, being committed. That's what it meant to me. That's what it still means to me. That's what it will always mean to me. And that was that that was important to me it is still immensely important to me it's being good and you know and i try in every way that i can in dealing with my wife now to be as kind and as good to her as 
Because I think with everything that my wife has been through, she deserves that. And I'll leave that as that. But when you look at Derek and how he handled the whole riff, that was a lot going on. And I didn't get real deep off into it because there was that marriage and it was happening. And, you know, I, it, my thing is, what happened in my situation proves that there's no room for stone throwing. That everybody's in a journey. Everybody's going somewhere. Everybody is, is trying to make this thing be okay. And we're in a society where marriage is being spurned. And this is what I can tell you in my study historically about the family and marriage is that anytime you start to spurn the principles of marriage and the function and the role it plays and the underpinning and foundational uh, setting for the family, which is where we teach, and inform and inculcate and instruct and develop the value systems that we hold dear to with our children, the more you spurn it, the more moral decay sets in the more you start to witness antinomianism and everybody is worried about themselves and what we have now is an entire culture that's self-serving it's about me it's not about my family it's not about my community it's not about my race it's about me i want what i want i don't care whatever the ramifications or the repercussions of what i want creates I am tired of X, Y, Z, and I'm gonna do it, and I don't care what happens. And I, you know, and what happens is you take a, 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 an environment God created to be social, and you isolate yourself, and you cause other people to isolate themselves, and you get these fractures in the social culture that leads to everybody thinking of themselves and then everybody's hurting everybody because you're not flowing in the same direction. You're creating more friction than you are flow. And what that does is that stifles growth, that stifles power, that stifles so many things that are part of who we're supposed to be. There's so many people falling short of their greatness because of this individualism. There's so many people, uh, you know, and, you, and the thing is, there's a place for Derek Jackson where he was, you know, not really 100% committed to be. My whole thing is you stand up and you make an oath. How close you walk to that oath, that vow, especially those of us who took our vows underneath God, how close you walk underneath that has so much impact on what in, what force you will create in this world, how you will be felt, the impact you will have, the success you will experience is so much on that, that you should really give a great deal of consideration to the vows that you take and what you declare and what you promise under God, because you're talking about a triangular covenant. It's a covenant between two people in God that connect all three and all three are holding one another accountable. And when you break that covenant, it comes at a cost. And when you violate the covenant, cheating, abuse, failure to stand up and meet your responsibilities as a man, as a woman, consistently, it will lead to devastation. My hope is that both of them find a place of healing because even though I've, it's obvious that to the, to the average person that she's hurt because of the infidelity, there's something inside of him that's hurting, that's missing, that's absent, that he needs to deal with it. He's never going to be good for anybody. Um, you know, because of, because of that. Now, you know, I've seen some things that could be, you know, and, and, and it's easy to speculate, you know, it seems like when they first got together, they both were quote unquote, you know, not fit. I'm not taking shots at anybody because everybody knows my journey. I just got back to fit. Uh, you know, I was there most of my life it took a couple of years, well, about four or five years off and got real bad and just got back. So I'm not taking shots, I'm just calling it as it is. It seems that they, at some point they were both not fit and then all of a sudden he went on a fit craze and he started feeling himself. That happens so often. 
uh, when you don't know who you are and everything is inside of something and then all of a sudden all of a sudden something changes and you start to get attention and all of a sudden you especially if how you see yourself is 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 contingent upon how people perceive you and you get a physical change and all of a sudden honeys are hollering at you now you you you, you know you're feeling yourself you know your shirt's fitting right and all of a sudden now you're that dude you it's easy to lose yourself in that that's a fast way to lose yourself um and you have to be real careful about about that and you know and, and you got to understand that a lot of attention comes with that and you know what i can tell you is being a man of intellect i am being a man that's reasonably attractive i am um it's not concede anything i just believe in who i am and i know who i am you get i have always had attention even when i was overweight i always had attention but i always respected my marriage matter of fact there are relationships that i had years before i met my wife that i felt kind of bordered on not the type of conversations and playful banter and stuff that we were used to doing that fit my and so I chilled on those. All my friends said, "I cool, I get it." Nothing trumps the marriage to me. Something has to be there. You got God, your marriage, your family, and when you don't know how to prioritize that, everything else gets in the way. You know, like I said again, I really truly hope that things work out, that they get healed. That you know things go. That maybe even they save their marriage. That would be my ultimate uh, desires. That they save their marriage. We have so many marriages falling apart, and we don't understand the devastation that that is going to have on the next generation and the subsequent generation after that, because nobody's teaching that. And I'm going to do my best. And I'll tell you, I struggled this year with confidence because you know, like you just finished a book on merging souls and look what's going on in your life. Nobody's going to buy that. Nobody's going to read that. What I'm going through doesn't change the principles. What I'm going through doesn't change how things work. What I'm going through is simply a reflection of my own personal experience and all of the moving parts that go along with it. And there are so many moving parts that, you know, it's not a conviction against whether I did my research, whether I understand it. It's what works. When you look at people who are making things work, these are the things that are happening. And what you're going to find is even in the long-standing relationships, there were rough periods. A problem with a lot of things is people are getting started out on rough ground. It's hard when you get started. You, you never have a real honeymoon period. And you're getting started and you're trying to fight through. And a lot of times, it's just a little more than barren. Here's another problem. And I'm just sharing this with people who are going through or looking through it. Don't give up on love. Don't give up on marriage. Don't give up on family. We need that so badly in the black community. But there is, you know, so many people now who have gone through so much in their lives that are in their 40s and 50s that are just saying, screw it. They're tired. And it's sad because we didn't intercept it and interrupt it. We didn't do what we needed to do when we needed to do it to interrupt this devastating force that we're experiencing now. So I said all that, look, my prayers are going out to um, Derek Jackson and his uh, estranged wife, Denia. Um, rest in peace to Kevin Samuel since I met, mentioned him um, and I'm going to touch on some of those things and I'm going to bring that out uh, those who are, have followed me know that uh, while he was alive I was definitely not a fan not so much of some of the things he said even though I didn't agree with some of the things but more of his approach and I didn't think it was healthy 
as a psychologist, I think I have a professional opinion in that. And that was my professional opinion. I didn't think it was healthy. I didn't think it had, uh, I, I think it was a good place for black men to vent because most black men don't have voices. Uh, when, you know, you, you say the wrong thing and, and they're on your ass, so we don't have a voice. Kevin Samuels with that voice. And so that's what he realized. He was extremely smart. So he realized nobody's taking this angle. Everybody's on the, uh, you know, stroke the black woman or stroke women and nobody's giving black men a voice. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to actually get both audiences. I'm going to get the black men who love me and I'm going to get the black women who hate me. And uh, he mastered it. He killed it. Um, I hate that he passed away. Number one is he's not here to manage his 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 his, his mindset or his intellectual property. And so a lot of people are going to take it and run with it and do things with it that I don't think he ever intended. Um, and it's unfortunate. Uh, but what we need to be doing in the process is modeling manhood instead of talking about it so much. Uh, that's what I'm gonna leave that on. Uh, we can't be perfect, but we can strive to be better. On that note, look again, if you believe in the work that I've been doing for years, if you believe that I'm making an impact, Show some love, show some support. Go to the description box, click the link, and support our work. On that note, I'm out of you guys. Have an unbelievable day.